I love royalty stocks and I love pizza, so grab yourself a slice. This is going to be a tasty one. Canadians love their pizza, and when it comes to ordering a delicious one, well, Pizza Pizza is the destination for many of us. They have a presence in every province, except for, well, Newfoundland. At least you still have Pizza Delight on the rock. Pizza Pizza started in Toronto back in 1967 as a single store, and they've grown big time since then. In fact, they have more than 750 locations today from coast to coast, well, except for Newfoundland. In the West, they do fall under a different brand. They're known as Pizza 73. Now, here is kind of a little bit of an interesting fun fact. When Little Caesars expanded into Canada, they were not allowed to use their Pizza Pizza slogan. In some campaigns, they used a delivery delivery. Not as easy to come off the tongue as Pizza Pizza. Join the conversation. Let us know in the comments your favorite pizza pie. Your participation is well appreciated. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date on future content and a huge thank you for that click. One question investors may be curious about with Pizza Pizza is just how their royalty model works. In a nutshell, the company collects royalties based on a percentage of their sales from, well, their big network of Pizza Pizza and Pizza 73 outlets. This revenue is then primarily distributed to shareholders as dividends. The company still, of course, gets a little bit of that royalty money, but the majority of their money comes from franchise fees and leasing properties to several of their own locations. With a loyal customer base of pizza-loving Canadians, the cash flow has been consistent as reflected by the dividends. For investors, Pizza Pizza Royalty Corp offers some crispy advantages. The stability of its brand, consistent dividend payouts, and its vast network of franchises makes it an enticing prospect for those looking to add some flavor to their portfolio. Despite all of that and how hungry it may be making me for some pizza, we still can't forgo looking into their fundamentals. We still need to call on our good old buddy, Mr. Math. A pizza may start with dough, just like our fundamentals starts with that uh, surface data. That one was a wee bit corny. Anyway, their market cap comes in at 496.71 million, and they have a very average beta of 1.03. Their earnings per share come in at 0.89, and they have a price to earnings ratio of 17.26. If we look at their peers, the average comes in at 15.6. Some of their peers include AW Revenue Royalties with a PE ratio of 16.70. MTY Food Group with a PE of 20.1 and Boston Pizza Royalty at, well, a very low PE ratio of 10.0. When we look at their price to book ratio, that comes in at 1.70. Looking at their pure average, that comes in at 1.9. Overall, these numbers are not too shabby. Let's also get their return on equity. That comes in at 10.09%. So far, so good. Let's dive a little deeper and take a look at their cash situation. They have a revenue of 38.64 million. Now that revenue is projected to grow by 39.6% per year. That's pretty good. Their earnings come in at 29.56 million. The one sour note is that their earnings have declined by an average of 0.08% over the last five years. I suspect this could be related to inflation, so it is not too concerning. Their free cash flow, that comes in at 29.91 million, and they have an operating cash flow of, well, the exact same, 29.91 million. Let's take a look at their fair value. So their current value right now comes in at $15.25 using a discounted cash flow model, we get a fair value of $20.55. That paints them as undervalued by 25.8%. I think I do agree with this as I do think there is room for growth here. Their cash situation is not too shabby overall. So let's switch gears and take a look at the returns. They have a pretty attractive dividend yield of 5.902%. That of course is paid out monthly in the amount of 7.5 cents per share. They do have a higher payout rate of 92.13%. This payout ratio is not sustainable, but provided the revenue increases as predicted, there's really not a huge concern with it. Looking at their actual growth, over the three year, their price rose from $8.89 to $15.36. That is a return on investment of 72.78%. Adding in those dividends, we get a really nice looking total return of 98.13%. When we look at the one year, their price rose from $13.63 to $15.36. That is a return on investment of 12.69%. Add in the dividends, we get a total return of 18.95%. And when we look at this year in 2023, it looks a lot like the one year. They started at $13.62, going up to $15.36. That's a return on investment of 12.78% and a total return of 16.51% after we add in the dividends. I totally love these returns. They are exactly 
exactly what I want to see in a great total return stock. I can already tell you that debt does not usually become an issue with a royalty stock, but Nonetheless, we still need to ensure that they are not the exception to that rule. They have a total debt of $46.97 million, and when we look at their total equity, that comes in at $294.54 million. That gives them a debt to equity ratio of 15.9%. Holy banana bread, I really do like this. To add icing to the pie, this debt to equity ratio has actually been decreasing. It was 16.4% just five years ago, so they're moving in the right direction. I love this. They do also also have some cash and equivalents at 7.16 million. Let's take a quick look at their short term. Their short term assets come in at 11.12 million and they've got short term liabilities of 3.50 million. Not too shabby. On the long term, their assets come in at 358.59 million and those liabilities come in at 71.68 million. This is a fantastic debt situation. Their debt is well covered by their operating cash flow and the interest on that debt is also well covered by their earnings before interest and taxes you know, that good old EBIT. So what is that final verdict? I love this company. I think for a total return investor, they are the complete package. We are looking at a company with a great track record and no indications of that changing anytime soon. You will get some moderate to heavy dividends and steady growth to boot. This is a very attractive company. The passive income investor may find the dividends a little low, but the stability of the capital and the monthly distributions may still be very attractive for you. Long-term investors will will love this stock for the growth and well, the dividends are nice too. It is a great choice for the long-term investor, mid-term and even short-term investors. I really don't have anything bad to say about this one. Nonetheless, you still need to be sure to do your own due diligence before throwing any cash on that table. Keep the learning going. Watch my video on Hold Forever Stocks linked on the left or test YouTube's recommendation skills by checking out the video on the right. Your choice will decide the winner and I will see you in the next video.